Inflation drops for fifth straight month. It's now 17.01% for the month of August. Edo State goes tough on unvaccinated civil servants, bars them from entering their offices. The papers are in today and we'll be having an analyst join us to review the headlines. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a very, very beautiful Thursday morning, the 16th of September 2021. We're excited that you've decided to join us this morning um, for an analysis of the current affairs in Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbon. Good morning and welcome to Plus TV Africa's The Breakfast. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Okay, so our first top trending story this morning takes us to Edo State, like our first takes us, took us to Edo State yesterday, talking about University of Benin and how the school was indefinitely shut down over students' protest. Um, in Edo State this time around, um, it's over vaccination cards. The Edo State government had announced that um, it would deny entry to workers who had not received COVID-19 vaccination and of course had a COVID-19 vaccination card um, to prove it. Um, maybe the state civil servants did not think the government, you know, was, you know, taking that very seriously until they showed up at their places of work yesterday and were locked out. Um, we have videos of, you know, civil servants in a door state just loitering around the entrance to their offices, just sitting on the pavements there, denied entry into um, their offices. There are um, signboards, there are banners, you know, hanging outside the gates of those buildings saying no vaccination card, no entry. And it's really caused quite a stir on social media. People have been asking, is the COVID-19 vaccination compulsory? What exactly, you know, does the government seek to achieve? And, and this really is, is interesting to note. I mean, take a look at the Secretariat buildings there in Edo State. People just standing outside, unable to get access into their offices. Um, let's recall, you know, like I mentioned, that the Edo State government had said this, that if you don't have your vaccination card, you won't be able to enter the government office. And also a, a former special advisor on media and communications to Governor um, Godwin Obasiki, um, the state governor, also forgot his own vaccination card. I mean, he, he mentioned when he was interviewed that the governor's directives had just taken effect just yesterday, um, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that he came into the office where he forgot his vaccination card, he was refused entry, and that he would have to go home um, to get his card to access the government house. I think we have um, um, videos of residents of Edo yes. State and civil servants um, just speaking their minds regarding this matter. Take a listen. Say who not take vaccine, make it not enter inside gates. And we don't know what to use I mean. In one use the vaccine, keep people. We are not in support of those vaccines because like me now they sick. Now they sick, now they take medicine. I don't want to take, I am not go take. May our bus and family go take them. You understand? Yeah. Lock us out because of the vaccination. First of all, I thank you for trying to protect us from this coronavirus. The one thing I wanted to know also is that vaccination is not mandatory. It's not compulsory. It's something you take out of your free way. You understand? You should not try to make this state to look like there is no law. I learned that there's a court of competent jurisdiction that are restric uh, restricting from for buying people from entering their office for taking the vaccine. But now, now I want to let you know that you should allow to take it out of our own free will. Do you understand? For example, for even me, I don't believe there's COVID-19 in this state. If there's COVID-19 in, in Nigeria, due to the level of our sanitation, we we'll see people dying like flies on the streets. Wow, that really was the thoughts and minds of a Doe civil servant um, talking about the COVID-19 vaccination, refusing to take the vaccination to say it's not compulsory. And really, this is, this is quite a debate. Is the COVID-19 vaccination compulsory? Some people, you know, say that, you know, it should be their decision. You know, that man there said he's not sick, he doesn't feel unwell, so why should he get vaccinated? But actually, the COVID-19 vaccination is not compulsory. The federal government does not, um, you know, mandate people to take the COVID-19 vaccination. They have been encouraging people to do so. We understand that there's a vaccine hesitancy in Nigeria, you know, and um, people have just been encouraged. But 
I think that if the government really wants to um, ramp up the numbers for people to begin to take the vaccination, it is steps like this that they, they resort to, saying if you want to get access into certain buildings, then you have to present a vaccination card. Um, well, the conversation on um, va vaccine hesitancy um, has you know, existed in Nigeria for a long time, not just with COVID-19, including even uh, child uh, vaccination. Um, there's times when there's been chaos, even in the south, southeast, uh, because of rumors concerning vaccination. Um, and so it has always been a very huge role of the government to ensure that proper information is, you know, is shared with regards to vaccine, um, vaccination and, and, and its benefits. Um, we've, you know, a few times here stated that the Nigerian government hasn't done well enough with regards to information um, and, uh, you know, pu publicity with regards to vaccination and COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we we've repeatedly said that the Ministry of Information, um, you know, um, and uh, the National Orientation Agency and some of all those bodies haven't done well enough with, you know, that regard. Um, and one reason, you know, that's important to point out is one of the things that the last uh, guy who was interviewed said mm -hmm. that, you know, he doesn't believe that there is even COVID-19, that if there was, you would see people dying like flies. Those are the words that he used on the streets, which um, I'm not shocked to hear uh, mm -hmm. from, you know, a person in Nigeria, because that's what they expect. That's, you know, that's the narrative that they probably have with regards to COVID-19 and how deadly it is. Um, and since you're not seeing that, you would, even not, not just in a dose state, across the country, there's, I'm sure there's millions of people that you would ask that would have the same thoughts, that they don't believe that there's COVID-19 because they haven't seen anyone die. They haven't seen anything like that happen around them. So it's very, very important that the government does what is necessary to educate people better on uh, COVID-19 and the need to take uh, the vaccine. I'm due for my second vaccination today, so I'm going to be taking um, it right after work. Um, but another thing is the... Um, Anti-vaxxers, as they're popularly called across the world. In the United States, in France, in France, there was a huge riot. In the U.S., there is huge numbers of people who are called anti-vaxxers who don't believe um, that they should take a, a you know, vaccination, mm -hmm. they should be forced to take a vaccine. But in those societies, there's, you know, more rights, you know, and, you know, the government respects some of all those rights. They will try to encourage you and tell you that, yes, you know, you may not be able to enter certain places or you, you know, pretty, it started with wearing a mask. You know, you kind of enter certain buildings without wearing a mask. I've seen a lot of people getting arrested in the airport. I've seen and in, people in get, receive ice cream for getting yeah. vaccinated. Um, so, so the conversation might be a little calmer um, in other climes and mm -hmm. the approach that the government has, yeah. you know, might be a little different. Um, the Edo State Governor may also be trying to use his own methods of trying to encourage people to take the vaccine yeah. and make them understand how important it is. But for people who don't believe that they should be forced to take the vaccine, um, you also cannot force them. You have to find ways to convince them that the vaccine mm -hmm. is not dangerous and it's not in any way going to be harmful to your health. And that's what the Edo State Government needs to do. Um, I don't also think that it is ripe at this time for the Edo State Government to enforce such laws. If you look at the numbers of vaccines that are available in Edo State, I remember that they had, I think they received about 40,000 mm -hmm. sometime last week. And the number of available vaccines compared to the number of workers that they have um, in the state, in, um, you know, state government workers, the federal government workers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's also fair um, that he can do that, except he has given a time frame and he knows that there have been vaccines available for many, many months and, you know, people don't seem to be taking them. Then yeah. maybe you can do that. But the public enlightenment and the education concerning um, vaccination um, is where it's the government should start yes, from. And that's, exactly. where, that's where they should, they should you know... Exactly. Uh, that's even one more. of the concerns that, you know, I've seen people raise online. Some people said they just went to work and saw that they were locked out, that they had, they had no clue, they had no idea that there was such a directive in place. So really, the government needs to do a lot regarding information, you know, you know putting out circulars, um, engaging the mass media to let people know that, you know, this is what's going to happen. And you need to give them enough time to, to you know, go ahead and register. Because sometimes you open the website, I've heard people say, it doesn't load, it doesn't come up. So you need to give people time, not just say from tomorrow. That's one of the challenges we've had with government, with your Okada ban, yeah. with so many things. You need to, you know, inform people ahead of time, give them time to make the adjustment to their lives and not just say from tomorrow here's the new law and also make up uh, vaccines available. available you know Edo State has you know population in, in millions you can't have 40,000 vaccines and expect that everyone would suddenly you know get vaccinated mm -hmm. my, both my parents have been vaccinated but that was months ago um, during the first uh, vaccination wave so um, there has to be more time and more you know public enlightenment with regards to vaccination before you start to take such steps Yes, and um, talking about steps, the Akwa Ibom State government has taken a big one. 
and it's one that Southern Governors decided to take by a September 1st deadline. And it's that the Akwa Ibom State House of Assembly on Tuesday passed the bill on the prohibition of open grazing into law. Now, it's titled a bill for a law to prohibit open grazing uh, of livestock and provide for the establishment of ranches and livestock administration, regulation and control. Um, it was passed after it was read the third time on the floor of the House uh, during the plenary um, in Aqua Ibom. Uh, basically, this, this, this is the news. This is the news of the season. Um, states are passing the anti-open grazing bill into law. Uh, the ban is already in place in states like Eboni, Abia, Bayelsa, Rivers, Oyo, Ekiti, Undo, and Lagos. You know, <clears throat> when we talk about the grazing situation, the cattle, um, farmers, herders clashes, it's been one of the most controversial issues and people even say, why should cattle, including yourself, why should cattle be such a big deal? Why should cattle cause such a controversy in Nigeria? But we know that it's because of the security issues that you know have followed um, the fact that cattle can just seem to graze and roam freely across the country. So states are taking this very seriously. And one thing I really want to pick from this is, um, it's good to see that state governors could come together to say, Let's do something about this. They set a deadline, even though most states did not meet the September 1st deadline, but we've seen lots of states begin to sign this anti-open grazing bill into law. But it makes me realize that when there's a will, there's a way. There are lots of bills on the floor of the House regarding Child Protection Act, you know, acts to protect women, acts for, you understand what I'm trying to say? Like bills that can move the country forward, legislature that can take us to the next level where we need to be. But you would see that those bills will stall for years and years and years. And you wonder why. But you see this anti-open grazing bill, it seems people are speaking with one mind. They seem to have resolved that one of the ways to end these security issues is to stop open grazing. And in just a few days, in just a few weeks, you see states passing it into law. Let's use and drive that same energy for other bills that can you know, better the lives of, of citizens in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, um, you know, so, so the thing with politics um, is... It's a game of numbers. It's also a game of, you know, convincing and cajoling and, you know, you know discussions here and there. Uh, the reason certain bills might stall is maybe because they haven't been able to, you know, get as many people interested in that bill or get as many people, um, you know, to see the value in that bill. The conversations are not loud enough in that regard. Uh, for this one, the conversation has been loud enough for years, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, for state governors who have always complained that they're not in charge or not in control of the security, security architecture in their states. Yes, they receive uh, security votes every month, but they're still not in charge of security architecture. They can't um, order the GOCs or order the, um, uh, the state commissioners of police. They can't you know, give such orders um, to protect their people. The Amotekmo also and, and um, Ibubayagu, is it Ibubayagu? Yeah. Um, and ESN as well? Yes. Well, not ESN. ESN is a, it's not a government control. Um, some of all those groups ha aren't fully armed or financed well enough to be state security architecture. So until they get there, they don't have full control. But what they have is their state house of assembly and they have laws. They have the power to make laws and to, you know, at least enforce some of all those laws at a particular level. And that's what the state governors are trying to do. So since we cannot by ourselves protect our people with the security agencies that um, you know, are currently um, existing, then we will be able to make certain laws to at least you know, make a difference. Um, everyone expected that by September 1st, you know, all the state governors in the South who had been at that meeting and had that agreement would have passed those bills by now, but there's still some states that are lacking. Enugu State, I think, passes yesterday. Um, Ogun State, I think, also pre I think did the same thing, and then um, Akwa Ibom. So it is simply just governors doing what they think is necessary. It may not be 100% the answer to the challenge with regards to security, but it's a step. And they've seen where the challenge has been, um, you know, through you know, cattle grazing. And so they will take that step. As we move further, I'm sure that they would also open up other conversations and see what more laws that they can put in place to ensure that the people are protected. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, they, they would be able to save more lives. Because it, this whole, you know, conversation, you know, the whole... Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, cattle grazing conversation has been going on for many, many, many years. But in the last six, you know, years has been at its peak. Um, we've never seen it on this level before. The death 
the murder, the, 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 the atrocities that have been committed in, you know, in the name of cattle grazing have been you know, way more than Nigeria has ever experienced. And so it's important that they do what they think is necessary to protect their people. And you can't you know, hold it against them. Not at all. And beyond the passage of these bills into law, I, I, want to, I want us to begin to hear conversations regarding implementation. Because most times you get these bills passed into law and they just die on paper. Let's begin to see what steps the state governments are doing, or what steps they're taking, and what mecha mechanisms they're putting in place. Are they having more border control around their states? Are they, um, 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 you know, communicating with the locals to say if you see a you know cattle you know in your area walking through your streets this is a helpline you can call you know are, are police stations or are policemen going to be stationed around certain areas so let's begin to see um the ways you can enforce that the ways you can implement that and not just say oh we've passed it into law and that's that um, our next top trending story is something that has cost, is about someone that has given us so much joy as a Nigerian and as Africans as a whole. And it's the person of Ungozi Okunja Iwela, who we all celebrated when she um, became the Director General of the World Trade Organization, WTO. And she's now been named Time Magazine's um, one of the most hundred influential people for 2021. Now, that Time Magazine's annual list of 100 influential people um, gives recognition to people who, whose ideas, whose example, their talent, or their discoveries transform the world that we live in. The list was released um, yesterday on Wednesday, and it placed you know, um, these people into five categories, titans, pioneers, artists, leaders, and icon. Um, you know, in March 2021, Okonje Wela became the first woman, first African to lead the WTO, and she was included in the leaders category alongside President of the United States Joe Biden, um, alongside Kamala Harris, U.S. Vice President, alongside President of China Xi Jinping, and um, Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of India. Um, you know, we've seen people respond to this. We've seen uh, Prince Harry, Meghan Merkel, um, Duke and Duchess of, of Sussex saying that, um, um, you know, this Nigeria's former Minister of Finance knows how to get things done. They praise her work, you know, for everything she's been doing um, at the helm of affairs at the WTO. You know, they also talk about, you know, how she's been trying to galvanize support um, for African countries um, regarding finance and, of course, regarding um, vaccination and world unity. So congratulations to Okonja Iwela um, one more time. Keep making us proud. Um, three points. The first one is that this is the same person that a group of people a few years ago were asking that her um, degree or, you know, uh, her honorary degree or something like that be withdrawn, you know, from a certain university outside the country because of politics. Um, those same people today, you know, will celebrate, you know, celebrate her, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, I had to mention that because of how dangerous, you know, sometimes we play politics in Nigeria mm -hmm. because of personal issues, you know, that we have or because, you know, we are simply, well, not we, some people are, you know, completely psychophants um, who would do anything whatsoever. Uh, to pull a person down simply, you know, just because they're not in the same political party as they are. Mm. Um, so, um, Okonjo Wella has continued to excel. Um, another two points that I will make, um, first of all, is the conversation that I had with a person a few days ago about the quality of um, the Nigerian, the Nigerian person. Um, he had argued that the reason we continue to have terrible uh, leadership in, you know, at different levels is because the Nigerian himself, you know, doesn't have the qualities for leadership, but Nigerian himself is corrupt or, you know, some of all of that. And I have to say, absolutely I not. I disagree. Because there's a lot of people who um, have exceptional qualities as Nigerians that excel here in Nigeria and outside the country. Um, Nigeria is blessed with the human resources that a lot of countries envy, even in the West. Envy the amount of human resources that Nigeria has, the brilliant minds that Nigeria has. And our Okonjo, population. Okonjo Wella. Yeah, besides population, the, the quality. The Okonjo Wella is an example of you know, those kind of people. There's a few p people that you can point to in the world today that you would say these are exceptional human beings and they are Nigerians and they would excel in any field that you place them. She is that person and she has continued to be that person for the um, length of her career. And she not, she's not in any way going to you know, go down. Um, the third one is the importance, you know, and, and she has continued, you know, to make me love the conversation concerning women in leadership and how we, Nigeria, has some of, you know, the, the best female leaders that, we, that the world has seen, but we still are failing to allow for a wider space for women in leadership. 
Um, Angela Merkel is one person who I think she's stepping down. Uh, or she, uh, yeah, she's stepping down pretty soon. And, you know, she's, uh, I've seen online, you know, the amount of praise that she has also received. There are people who criticize and say, oh, what is the huge thing that she did? But simply being able to hold one of the world's biggest countries for that long and hold, you know, it together without any crisis, without any major challenges and continue to put Germany where it is in the world map is a huge deal that she was able to achieve. And she has continued to be that person. She was the first example sometime this week that I pointed out to say, okay, I would, I'm, I'm still hungry to see more women in leadership roles in Nigeria and across the world. Chimamanda um, Adichie, there's many, many names that you can point out that have done so well that we, we pray and we wish that we can put these people in positions of leadership. Okonjo Wala has been in a leadership position before, but we need to have more of those conversations across Nigeria and encourage more women to get into the electoral um, um, uh, positions, get voted for, and you know fill up those positions. And would, I'm very, very 100% sure mm -hmm. that would see a huge difference. Indeed. Um, let's take a break here. We're done with Top Trending. Uh, let's now see what's trending across our national newspapers after the break. Stay with us.